All right. I'm going to talk about the refrigeration cycle. Starting with the compressor. The compressor is best described as a vapor pump. It only pumps gas. It's not designed to pump liquid. You cannot compress a liquid. You can only compress a gas. So, refrigerant enters the compressor as a gas. In this, in this case, we're going to be going counterclockwise. So we're going to enter the compressor through the suction line. The state of refrigerant in the suction line is a low temp, low pressure, superheated gas. Then we're going to leave the condenser, I mean leave the compressor, I'm sorry, and go into the condenser. When we leave the compressor, we're going to leave on the discharge line. Excuse my handwriting. The discharge, when that suction gas comes in that compressor, the compressor compresses it and raises the pressure. So we go from a low uh, pressure to a high pressure. Anytime you raise the pressure, you raise the temperature. So we're going to go from a low temperature to a high temperature. And we still are a superheated gas. So again, you go in that compressor as a low temperature vapor, you come out a high temperature vapor. You go in as a low pressure vapor, you come out as a high pressure vapor. You still have a superheated gas, you're just going to pick up more superheat. And so now, you have entered into the condenser. The purpose of the condenser is to reject heat. Now, a condenser here is designed to operate at 95 degrees outside. So you have 95 degree air that's getting pulled over this condenser by an outdoor fan. <clears throat> now you may think 95 is hot, but the gas in that discharge line can be 200 degrees. So if you blow 95 degrees over something that's 200 degrees, the condenser is going to give off heat. Um, the 200 degree heat in the condenser is going to go to the 95 degree air. So the condenser is going to reject heat in three stages. First thing you got to do is de-superheat. That's get rid of uh, all your superheat you picked up in your evaporator and with your compressor um, superheated. The next thing we want to do is to actually condense. That's why we get the name condenser. So you have a hot gas going into your condenser, 200 degrees. You pull this 95 degree air over it. That 200 degree gas, the temperature is going to start to drop and drop and drop. Uh, we want to get rid of all your superheat. Once you get rid of your superheat, the next step is to Condense. Condense means to go from a vapor to a liquid. So now, we're still going to pull more air across it. So we want to drop down from condensing. Now we want to do what we call subcool. So a hot gas comes in. You blow air over it. The temperature starts to drop. When the temperature drops, it's going to eventually start to condense, turn from a gas to a liquid. Now, if it's a liquid and you still pull the air across it, what you're going to do now is subcool. Subcool is additional heat removed from refrigerant liquid after you reach the saturation point. Simply put, I'll give you an instance. If you take steam, steam is superheated water vapor. If you de-superheat steam, you pull all of the heat out of it, eventually the steam turns back into water. That would be condensing. Now that you have it in water form, if you remove more heat from it, not to a point where it freezes, you just remove more heat from that, then you're going to have uh, subcooling. So, de-superheating at atmospheric pressure would be removing any heat from steam above 212 degrees. Water boils at 212. So you pull all the heat down and at 212 you start to condense. And if you pull the temperature from that water down from 212 to 202, then you did two degrees of subcooling. So, come in the compressor suction, compress it, go out discharge line. Discharge line to the condenser. Condenser goes in three phases. We do de-superheat, we condense, and then we subcool. 
So now we're going to send 100% liquid. So now we're in the liquid line. State of refrigerant in the liquid line is a high pressure, medium temperature, subcooled liquid. We're going to leave going to the metering device. And the metering device acts like a, a nozzle on a water hose. It restricts the flow of refrigerant to a point where we're now going to enter inside my evaporator. So now, you got a 3 8 line over here and, and, and a 5 8 line over here. Um, that refrigerant is introduced to a bigger area, so then the pressure drops. When the pressure drops, the temperature drops. So let's say that the temperature drops here. We may have subcooled here to a point where we're 115 degrees. So we started at 200. By the time we desuperheat, condense, and subcool, we're at 115 degrees. You drop the pressure down. Let's say it comes out at 36 degrees. The evaporator is designed to operate 75 degrees inside. And it's important to remember these numbers. This is designed. 75 degrees inside, 95 degrees when it's outside. So now, again, we pull the 75 degree air over the uh, evaporator. The evaporator is at 36. Heat travels from hot to cold. Indoor air is colder than the evaporator. So the heat travels from the indoor air into the evaporator. So then the air coming out of the evaporator is going to be colder. That's what we call our split. Or you can call it your delta T. Um, it should be a difference of 18 to 20 degrees. So if we're taking in 75, we should blow out 55 uh, to 50. 7 degrees, that's the difference of 18 to 20 degrees. So, 36 degree refrigerant hits 75 degrees, it's going to warm up 37, 38, 39, and at 75 degrees inside, 95 degrees outside, you want the refrigerant to start to boil when it gets to 40 degrees. So now the refrigerant starts to boil. After it all boils off, you're still pulling 75 degree air over it. So what's going to happen to the temperature of your boiling point? It's going to increase. Um, now your temperature does not increase until all the refrigerant has boiled off. So as long as the refrigerant is boiling, it's going to remain 40 degrees. Until the last drop of liquid boils off, then 41, 42, so on, so on, and so on. Um, the heat that you add after you boiled off is called superheat. So, I explained with the boiling water, I'm going to go back to that. If you have water and you have, let's say you have ice, you add heat to ice, you get water. You add, you add heat to water, you get a vapor. You add a heat to vapor, there's no more change in state. All you're doing now is superheating. So you add heat to 32 degree water, uh, I'm sorry, to ice, it's going to melt at 32 degrees. You add heat to that water, it's going to boil at 212. If you add heat to that to steam, it's not going to change state. All you're going to do is superheat it. Now, again, these numbers that I'm giving you are based off of sea level. So if you're in Colorado or something like that, uh, your water is not going to boil at 212. Please don't flood my email with a bunch of that. Uh, everything I'm saying is laboratory-based. 75 degrees inside, 95 degrees outside. I'm in the south. So I, I just I don't want to get a bunch of emails with a bunch of know-it-alls. This is just for people who want to get informed. Uh, and all of this is based off of laboratory and at sea level. So back to what I'm saying. 40 degrees remains the same until we boil off all the refrigerant. Then you start adding heat to that gas. That is where we come with this term superheat. So we return back to our compressor as a low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas. And what we'll do in the next demo is we'll break down how to check superheat, how to check subcooling. Right now I just want to cover the refrigeration cycle.